Good morning and welcome to Queensway Connect. It's a real privilege to have you joining us online here on Queensway Connect. This is the online service of Queensway Chapel in Melcham here in Wiltshire in England. Wherever you're watching from in the world, whether you're local to us or joining from some, some other place, it's lovely to have you with us. Our online service here is a, a blend of worship songs, of uh, elements and input from some of the members of the fellowship and some friends from elsewhere and some Bible teaching. Please do enjoy, engage and uh, if you're not afraid why not sing out the words for the songs which will appear on the screen. I'll be uh, bringing God's message from the Bible a little bit later on, so I look forward to seeing you again shortly. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord Oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before
I've been home. Hey? Oh, I get it. Oh, hello everyone. My name is Twist and this is Two Minute Twist. You got it. In my video today, I want to ask a question about the last part of Psalm 23, a famous part of the Bible written by David, a shepherd boy who became king. For some parts of his life, the Bible says how David was chased by enemies and had to hide out in caves. He even had to live there for a while. Not a great place to call home. I like caves. Eh? Hey? They are made from rock. Oh yeah, of course. I wonder what things make us feel at home. For me, I like socks. Hey? Socks, box, clocks, even rocks. I like rocks. Anything really that rhymes with fox. That's what makes me feel at home. Yeah. <laughs> There are lots of things that might make us feel at home. What makes you feel at home? In the famous words of Psalm 23, David talks about God's goodness and love and that he would be able to live in God's house. Here it is. I am sure that your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord. Wow, when David wrote that, he must have felt really at home with God. Listen, it's time for my big question. What makes you feel at home with God? What do you think? I would love to hear what you think. In fact, you could ask your grown-up to send me a message on my email. Info at twistonline.co.uk Oh yeah, look, there it is. And remember to keep talking about my questions with your friends and family. And we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. See you all next time. You got it. in me help me to love like you love me even when i want to go my own way jesus you make me strong no i won't give up even when it's tough i'm gonna shine my life for you yes i will do good and i will be I'm gonna shine my light for you I'll shine for you Lord, I'll be patient And I will share So others see How much you care Even when I want to go my own way Jesus, you Make me strong No, I won't give up Even when it's I'm gonna shine my light for you Yes, I will do good And I will be kind I'm gonna shine my light for you I'll shine for you I'll shine for you I'll shine for you
One of the things that we probably struggled with most uh, during the pandemic and particularly perhaps at the beginning 
And I think for many it's caused deep frustration, some of the heartache and stress and anxiety, is the whole question of loss of control. You may feel that you have lost control of your life, you've lost control of the direction of your life. You're not free to make many of the choices that you made before. Choices about where you go, uh, who you see, what you do. All of those things were stopped in an instant and picking them back up again, however much uh, freedom or however many regulations are still in place wherever you're living, uh, it has been difficult for us to pick those freedoms back up. I think one of the things that we've perhaps realised is that although we imagine we have control over our own lives and destiny, the reality is we actually don't. We actually don't. I don't know if you saw on the news this week here, certainly in the United Kingdom, one of the uh, local news stories has been one of the protest groups protesting against climate change, a group called Insulate, and they've been blocking the M25, the circular orbital motorway uh, around London. And in some of the videos that have been shown on the news, there have been drivers trying to take the law into their own hands who have been terribly frustrated with those who are sitting in the middle of the road protesting and are stopping them getting on with their work. There is a loss of control and drivers particularly, and if you've ever driven or you've been behind the wheel, you either will have been subject to or perhaps been guilty of a little bit of road rage, a little bit of... Um, anger and sometimes those behind the driving wheel know exactly what that is like and I think that's evidence of this loss of control someone cuts in on you and the pandemic has been a large cutting in on our lane someone has cut us up something has got in the way something has blocked our progress something has changed our path something significant has changed the course of history but the reality is, we don't really have control. Here's what it says in Colossians chapter 1. Let me read to you some verses. Colossians 1 verse 15 to 17. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. Did you get that? It's talking about Jesus. Our series that we're looking at over these few weeks, over these four weeks from Colossians chapter 1, are about Jesus about Christ and last week we thought about Christ for us that he died for our sins that Christ became the sacrifice for our sins dying to take away our sin dying to make a way back for us to God Christ for us today and next week we want to think about Christ over us Christ over us in fact this uh, verse begins with Christ before us it says this the Son is the image of the invisible God you know you want to know what God looks like look at Jesus Jesus says to his disciples in the Gospel of John you want to know what the Father is like well if you've seen the Son you've seen the Father Sometimes people uh, who I meet from Northern Ireland who knew my dad would say to me, you're just like your father. And sometimes when I look in the mirror or I recognise some of my own mannerisms, I can see my dad in myself. But Jesus is the image of the invisible God. You want to know what God is like. You want to know how God acts. You want to know how God thinks about you. Look at Jesus. Look at his love. Look at his compassion. Look at his care. Look at his miracles. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Of course, that's another way of saying he is God himself. 
if you want to see God look at Jesus it's not that Jesus was being very clever and being like God Jesus is God Paul here writing to the little church of uh, Christians in, in Colossae in this uh, letter says he's the firstborn over all creation. By the way, firstborn doesn't mean as some of the sects and cults teach that Jesus is the first created one. That's not a, at all what it means. Firstborn over something is about position. It's about position. Uh, if I had lived in a different culture, I'm in the middle of three sons. If I'd lived in a different culture, my eldest brother, who's called Nigel, would have been positionally the one to whom all things would have passed on the death of my father in a different culture, in a different era, in a different time. The firstborn is the one who is over everything the right hand man if you like the right hand person and it's saying that about Jesus Jesus is the firstborn over creation positionally in terms of authority Jesus has absolute authority over creation in fact the Bible here in Colossians 1 says he is um, he has authority over things that we can see and things that we can't see. It says, for in him all things were created. By the way, how could Jesus have been created if in him all things were created? So it's a position, firstborn over creation, it's not first created. Now all things that are created are created through him. Not just through him, but for him. You see, everything begins with Jesus. He is over all things. He's before all things. And all things are going to lead to their final conclusion, which they will find in Christ. All things were created for him. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So we can think about visible things. As I look past the camera, I can see the hedge at the back of our garden. I can see houses and clouds and birds flying past, telegraph uh, poles and wires, chimney pots. All of these things are visible to me. And you can see as you look at me, not just me, but the wall, the door, the books on my shelf, the bookshelves. Yes, you've guessed it, Billy bookcases from Ikea visible things, things created, things made. Jesus is over all things that are visible. But there are also powers, forces, evil forces sometimes, spiritual forces. And Jesus is over those things. One day, all of those forces, and some of you may have felt evil in your own lives. It may have affected you or it may have driven you. The Bible talks about Satan. It talks about evil spirits. There are spirits in this universe. There are spirits that influence this world. But you know, one day they will all fall before Jesus. He's over all things, whether they're visible or invisible whether they're thrones, great powers, human powers, presidents, kings, or invisible powers, demonic forces, spiritual beings. For all things have been created through him and for him. And then it concludes these little verses with, he is before all things and in him all things hold together. You feel like things have been falling apart over the last year and a half. It's been very difficult for you. You've had a sense of loss of control. Can I encourage you to submit your life, to surrender your heart, to still yourself before Jesus? the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who is creator of all things and in him all things hold together. If you feel like your world has been falling apart, Jesus is the one who can keep it together. This amazing universe that we can see around us and all of the invisible forces that we can't, 
He created all things. And in him, your life can be stuck back together. He's the glue. He's the one who can bring meaning and purpose and wholeness and peace and completion. You may feel like your life sometimes is like a, a jigsaw puzzle that's been broken and shaken and you just haven't got the patience to either see the whole picture or put the pieces together. But Jesus is the one who sees the complete picture. Jesus is the one, if you give him the box of pieces, he will take them and he will put them together in the right order and he will keep them together. I wonder if you would be willing to surrender your heart and your life to Jesus, to bow to him and say, Jesus, I don't have control over my life, but I want to give complete control to you. There are a couple of questions that I want to put up on the screen. And um, I guess the, the key question is simply this. Let's just put it up on the screen for you to look at. We all struggle with issues of control, but knowing that Christ is supreme Lord should affect how we live. In what ways does giving control of my life to Jesus change things? That's the question. In what ways does giving control of my life to Jesus change things? Just take a moment to think about the way that things may change drastically, massively, hugely for the better in your life as you give control to Jesus. Let me pray. Father, thank you that Jesus is before all things, the firstborn over all creation, the visible image of the invisible God, the one who, through whom everything was made and the one in whom all things hold together. Lord, I pray that each of us and each person watching might know the joy of surrendering the broken pieces of their lives to him. And Lord Jesus, as you take that box of pieces, I pray that each of us might know the miracle of you piece by piece, showing us the picture, the full picture, and allowing you authority, control, lordship, supremacy in our lives. Lord, may we have the peace of knowing that we are not in control, but Lord, that you are in control and we can trust you. I pray this in your name. Amen. Lord bless you. If you've got any comments or questions, just email Rachel on the email address or send a text message to the mobile phone number that's on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. If we can help you, encourage you, pray for you, and speak to you even, we'd love to do that. May God bless you and enjoy our closing song and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. God bless, bye bye.
Say